Good morning guys, hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I'm having a wonderful day because the mailman came to my house early at 10 o'clock in the morning and delivered my new camera that I talked about in my last video. Today we're also going to be doing a QA and a video. I'm going to be answering questions from the last video that I uploaded. If you guys stay to the end, I did say that drop your comments, questions, and I'll answer them in my next video, and which is this video. And this, I'll just show you guys, is my new camera. I did say I got a new camera, so I'm going to show you guys. It's a lot smaller, you guys notice compared to my Canon 70D. The reason why I got this is since I am going to Japan, I didn't want to lug around something heavy, and the 70D is roughly three to four pounds, and this is less than a pound, and it's mirrorless, and also, well, I can't really do it because the tripod's in the way, the screen flips all the way down backwards, or all the way down here, 180 degrees, and yeah, it's, it's cool. I like it a lot, super light, and I'm able to use my mic and my old lens, which is the Canon uh, 10 to 22, same as Casey and I sat a while back, and I got the EOS M adapter. The only thing I didn't like was when you buy this camera, it doesn't come with the adapter, so I had to buy this separately. But it did come with the tripod, um, little mount, and now I can use my tripod with it. Cause my 070D, I had to mount the tripod from the back here. And since the camera was so heavy in the lens, the tripod would just drop. That's one of the reasons why when I was recording my videos back in the day, my DIYs, I didn't show that pretty much put it on a tripod. Since you guys were like, hey, you should invest in a tripod. But I didn't want to spend like 200 bucks on a nice tripod. I just using this one that I have laying around. And this, since this camera's super light, I can use the tripod now, so more time lapses, more easier DIY videos for you, and better quality. This does record a lot better and records in 60 frames, so I can do that cinematic slow mo for you guys in Japan or when I work on my car. So, but that's that. And also a huge shout out to Severe Sky. If you guys aren't following up on Instagram, Severe Sky, there you go. He sent me out a little care package of all these cigarettes he makes. Look at all these, look at the Corgi. And um, yeah, these are six stickers. I'll put it in Instagram right here in the little video. And uh, you guys watch uh, Illuminate. They get a lot of stickers from him. And his stickers are actually really, really good quality. And I'm gonna put one on my laptop right above the Atomic Law logo right there for one of these but I figured it out and yeah thank you very much for the stickers hopefully uh, you send me more later on in the future and yeah check it out his, check out his IG he has a lot more stickers not just these ones he has different like a lot of variety of stickers but these are the ones that he currently had and hopefully he opens up the store soon because he doesn't have a store open up at the moment but I'm gonna slap a sticker on there and start the Q&A video and the setup is just the M5 Got the hood pop, so you guys have um, something to look at while I'm just talking. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, let's get started with this Q and A video. Laying down that peeking corgi right now. All right. So, I have first off, I want to say is I'm not sure how the audio quality sounds on this. It is the same mic from my previous camera, and I'm not sure about the shutter stuff. But uh, I haven't been really messed with the cameras. I literally just opened this up 30 minutes ago, slapped it on, put a battery in, and yeah, we're, we're just gonna film it. I'm gonna start from the bottom and then scroll up. Question is, for your oil catch can setup, did you delete your factory oil catch can behind your block? For your oil catch can setup, did you delete your factory oil catch behind your block? Or you're running nothing factory and aftermarket? OEM breather box, which is that black box we're talking about, is removed and it's plugged with one of those um, breather box plugs. You could buy those on eBay or mine came with the, came with the motor. It's all aftermarket. You got two bungs, got two dash 10 AN bungs welded on the valve cover. Made custom uh, lines, got 90 degree fittings and two uh, straights into a eBay cash can, which is roughly 30 bucks. And it does its job. And the reason why I did that is because you'd rather get atmosphere pressure. So going up, goes out through the top. So if you have it in the back of the block, I feel like since it's in the middle of the block, you're trying to catch stuff, it's gonna go up in the middle, get out, but it's still, you know. So you rather have it all entering or exiting out from the top. Okay, I think that works. <laughs> My dream build. Honestly, I want an NSX. Everybody wants a GTR or something, but I really want an NSX or even a RX-7 FD would be really, really nice, but I do not have money for an RX-7 or an NSX right now, so we'll just keep it with the Civic Rick now and just enjoy it while we can. Sir Sancho says, will you be my Asian dad? Please, I promise not to take a bunch of space in your trunk or I'll stay in your trunk. 
<laughs> I don't know what to say about that. What hood do I have? This hood, I think it's a VIS racing hood. Carbon fiber hood I got bought from Ronaldo. And then I cut a hole into it and put a Battlecraft style vent into it and riveted it on. So it's two things. So one VIS carbon fiber hood and a Battlecraft style vent. What was the name of your intake you had before? I had a, on the single cam, before I swapped it out, I had a top fuel intake. And then when I put the motor in, I had an AEM long ram, but I cut it to make it short ram just to fit because my uh, coolant reservoir tank. Now I'm running a Comtech ice box with uh, OEM ITR intake arm. With your scared bird rear conversion, are you using Integra calipers? On the rear, I am currently using Integra LS. Well, LS and GSR rear. Uh, this, if I'm correct, is the same. And the calipers are uh, Integra LS caliper. You can use anything between a 94 to 01 Integra uh, caliper, so. I think the rears are all the same, just the fronts are different on the GSR and LS, if I'm correct, but I'm not too sure. How do you pay for all your car parts? Do you have college education? I went to community college for two years, and then I told myself that school is not for me, so I stopped going to school and I've just been working and working and working and then decided to do videos for you guys because I always work on my car and spent all my money on my car. Made a YouTube channel and pretty much how do I pay for all my car parts? I work. I do have a decent job, that's why I upload every two to three days. But lately I've been working a lot more because I am going to Japan so I've got to rack up a little bit harder. Also, I do make money honestly off YouTube but I don't make like thousands and thousands of dollars. I make money off of it but at the same time, learn how to save your money even if you're not making a lot. Just learn how to save your money from working and You'll get there eventually. That's how I pay for all my car parts. And also buying car parts for cheap and flipping it. What advice do you have to people going to the track for the first time? Don't upgrade your car. Wherever your car is at now, before hitting the track, just bring it as is. Because if you keep putting too many parts in, you will end up eventually realizing that all those parts that you bought will not do anything for you. Well, it depends on how you drive your car and the driver, of course. My first time ever going to the track, I had literally sway bar, straw bars, everything. And then I kept spinning out and it just because the rear always whip out throughout the time as i kept going to the track i slowly started to you start slowly like adapting and learning how everything works like your car and shit and then how you drive let's use my car for example right now before i was running function form type ones with 16ks and 12ks and straw bars and shit and then as i kept going back to the track i finally upgraded my coils i'm running coney yellow ground control and i actually removed my front and rear strut bar and the car acts a lot way better it, the car rotates a lot better and it feels more um, easy, so uh, easy on the turn. So it just it just rotates perfectly into the turn. Bump down the dampening. Like these spring weights are a lot softer, but you don't want something too stiff. But that's just my personal preference on how I see it. Ever since I put the PCI rear spherical trail line bushings, which I will have a full review on in car video since I got this camera, feels a lot more harsh. So I had to bump down the dampening. As you go to the track, you will slowly learn like what you need and what you don't need. You'd be like, oh shit, I should take off my rear strap bar. Oh, I should, you know, change all this. And also, advice, if you're going to be running a bucket seat, at VTEC Club especially, you will need a roll bar and you need a five-point harness if you're going to be running a bucket seat. But if you're going to be having a bucket seat and going to the track without any of that, don't bother going. Just put in your sock seat, then go. Go first, experience, you'll learn what you need from there, and keep going back, and you'll get more addicted and addicted and addicted, and it does get pretty expensive eventually. That's one reason why I haven't went back to the track going to Japan. What were your dyno numbers on your new engine? It was roughly 200 to the wheels, but it dip does depend on the dyno. Don't really know how to explain it, but I was pushing 200. I, I don't, I have the graph, but it's in my room. If you get tired of NA, which is naturally aspirated, then maybe a turbo supercharged track car setup? Uh, no, I like NA. Um, also, I don't want turbo supercharged. I feel like it's unreliable. I know supercharged does put a lot more stress on your crank because it's always pulling. Turbo, I feel like it's not reliable. My friend Andrew Sang with his Jay's Racing Boosted S2000. His car was down for so long and he had so many problems with it. But I think it's okay now. I like NA and my plans eventually for the motor is I do want to get ITBs. That's why I want to keep it NA. I just like NA better. But my friend Danny sit down from Japan on uh, Xbox One. He's a good friend now. He's one of my subscribers and now we play Xbox together a lot. If you're watching this video, we'll do car review on car soon. He has a 1J IS300. And I'm actually planning on doing car reviews soon. Hit me up, Danny. Well, we already talked. Well, we already planned it. I'm just gonna keep it in a. I don't want Turbo Super Chat. I want to reliable. It is my daily. I still daily this on E85. Drives fine. Did you have to do any modifications for the CWS bumper? I did nothing, literally. Came out of the box, plug it right up, and it was straight. I did crack it, so I just had to repair it. That's it. But if you buy authentic CWS bump or authentic like FRP part, plug it in, and it'll be straight and it'll fit like butter, and you don't have to 
worry about all like the like fitment issues. I've been getting photos of people that send me like, I got a C-West bumper. What's up, Austin? I got a C-West bumper, but it doesn't fit, and they send me a photo, and it comes out like, looking like shit. Like you see, like the grill area is warped, so it doesn't really fit. That's why you should buy a real one. Which I think fake ones are roughly like two, three hundred bucks. If you buy a real ones, roughly four fifty. If you hit a Nemo's garage, so get a new one. It's cheap. And it fits better than all the replica shit that you could buy out there on the market. I literally just finished. Oh, dude, what about the shadow right here? Oh, you did. Oh, shit. I put the corgi right here. Ooh. Oh, I just noticed the Beer Sky actually has a small logo on his stickers right there. Very nice. Well, that's the end of the QA video. I don't know what's gonna be the next video after this because I am gonna be heading to Japan in roughly. I think 12 days from this video. I actually do get to vlog every single day. I know for a fact I am, but a lot of people are like, don't do it, you rather just go enjoy it. But I wanna make videos, so if I ever do wanna look back at it, I can look back at it. Um, but also, before I end this video, another huge shout out to Severe Sky for all the decals. My uh, friend here likes all the stickers too, so you wanna send him more too. No kidding, but yeah, hook it up, Severe Sky, and yeah, so. See what happens. Like, comment, subscribe, just like up to you guys. Stay tuned for the next video. Peace out.